Federal Rule of Evidence 404B prohibits evidence about a party's extrinsic crimes or bad acts that the other party offers to prove bad character. However, the rule does permit admission of extrinsic crimes or bad acts offered for certain other purposes, including the other party's knowledge about a matter disputed at trial. Rule 104A provides that, at a jury trial, the federal district court must decide any preliminary question about whether evidence is admissible. How do Rules 104A and 404B interact? The United States Supreme Court answered this question in Huddleston v. United States. On multiple occasions, Guy Huddleston took possession of wholesale lots of electronics and related equipment from Leroy Wesby and arranged to sell them on a commission basis. Huddleston sold the lots well below their market value. Police officers determined that at least some of the items that Huddleston resold had been stolen from their original owners. A federal grand jury charged Huddleston with possession and sale of thousands of stolen videotape cassettes. Huddleston pleaded not guilty during a jury trial. At trial, the only disputed factual issue was whether Huddleston knew that the cassettes were stolen when he took possession of them from Wesby. In addition to offering proof that Huddleston knew that the cassettes had been stolen, the prosecution also offered the testimony of Paul Tony, who had purchased a lot of televisions from Huddleston for well below their market value. The prosecution contended that Tony's testimony was admissible under Rule 404B because it was further proof that Huddleston had conducted an illegal fencing operation for Wesby. Huddleston objected that the prosecution's evidence of his alleged knowledge that the televisions were stolen was insufficient. Huddleston asked the federal district court to make a preliminary finding of whether Huddleston knew the televisions were stolen pursuant to Rule 104A before deciding to allow Tony's testimony under Rule 404B. The district court ruled that it wasn't required to make a threshold factual determination under Rule 104A that Huddleston knew that the televisions had been stolen. Rather, the court held, it only had to determine whether the jury could reasonably find that Huddleston knew that the televisions were stolen. The court concluded that the jury could do so based on the low price for which Huddleston sold the televisions, his inability to provide a bill of sale showing their original wholesale purchase, and the fact he obtained them from Wesby. The jury convicted Huddleston of possessing stolen cassettes. On appeal, the United States Court of Appeals for the Sixth Circuit affirmed Huddleston's conviction. Huddleston successfully petitioned the United States Supreme Court to review his case.